Hello everyone, please press subscribe, press follow, press the bell so you don't miss any new clips. Astral Pet Store. Author by Ancient Shi. Audio novels by novelist. Astral Pet Store. Chapter 156 Not Allowed. If so, go to the back of the line and wait. Su Ping only asked Yi Hao a casual question. Since Yi Hao wanted the training service, Su Ping remembered the 100,000 Yi Hao had paid before. Su Ping added, You book the 10th spot. It'll be your turn after number 9 is done. Those words shocked the other people waiting there. Mr. Su, we can make reservations. I want that, too. How can we make a reservation? Those in line threw out their questions at once. Su Ping didn't expect that this information could cause such a huge reaction. He lied, promised Yi Hao when the business was still bleak. It seemed that everyone was excited about the reservation option. That was understandable. If they could make a reservation, they wouldn't have to wait there by the door in utter boredom. Su Ping suddenly realized that this was a good way to make money. I'm making money from the reservation of services in my store. That is perfectly justifiable. Someone's deep buried soul of a dishonest businessman was awakening. Right at that moment. Warning. The store will only receive customers that mean to have their pets trained. No reservation will be accepted. No past reservation is valid, the system said seriously in Su Ping's mind. Su Ping raised his eyebrows. In his mind, he argued, why didn't you say so when I took Yi Hao's money? Besides, I'm not asking you to add the reservation service in the store. This is just another method of making money that I personally suggested. Someone else is bound to detect this business opportunity if we don't do it, and they will make the money that should be ours. Yi Hao asked another question to Su Ping, I can give you more money. How much will it cost to be the first? The line was long. Yi Hao didn't have the patience to wait for another nine people. Su Ping stopped the conversation in his mind. He remembered the system's words so he didn't cross the line. There's no set price for now. You have to wait for your turn. Yi Hao frowned. He looked at the boy standing in front of Su Ping and asked, How much do I have to pay for you to give up your spot for me? The boy was startled. He had heard about Yi Hao's wealth. Hesitating, the boy proposed, five, five thousand. Yi Hao replied at once, I'll give you ten thousand and I will take your spot. The boy was overjoyed. Are you serious? Here, take my place. The ten thousand was enough for the boy to have his pet trained there once. The other people behind this boy were taken aback. All of a sudden, their eyes began to glow. They had an epiphany. This was a brilliant way of making money and an easy way of making money at that. Those standing at the front did nothing more than get up early in the morning. You could make 10,000 just by getting up early. 10,000 was what a person could make in two months. This was some easy money. Su Ping knew this would happen. He pulled a long face and said to the system, see, they are the ones who'll be raking in the money. The system. Su Ping heaved a sigh in sorrow since the system didn't reply. System, you are too innocent. You don't understand the complexity of human nature. You can set up a rule that no one can transfer their spot and they can only have their own pets trained. That being said, he stopped before he had finished his sentence. He wished he could slap himself in the face. The formerly quiet system said, you're right. From now on, people that come to the store cannot transfer their spots in the lines. Besides, they can only train their own pets. The ones that transfer their spots will be blacklisted forever. I will recognize them no matter what disguise they take. No kidding. Out of anger, Su Ping slapped himself in his face. Yi Hao was scared by Su Ping's sudden action. The former thought that he had offended Su Ping by proposing to buy the spot. Yi Hao said in a haste, Mr. Su, don't do this. Mr. Su, it's not worth it. Su Ping didn't say anything to him. Inside, he was arguing with the system, biting his teeth. System, it is unethical to copy other people's ideas. You're not other people, you are my host, the system corrected him. Su Ping was on the verge of bursting into tears. He wasn't moved, he was enraged. The lines were about to fall apart. 
Many students at the head of the line were turning around to sell their spots. All of a sudden, Su Ping realized that what system did was not entirely bad. If the spots could be sold and transferred at will, then maybe, in the future, when he opened up the door, the only faces he could see were the ones lining for other people but not people that had gone there to train their pets. Maybe, when this news was spread out, the general public would occupy the spots and use this as a way to earn a living. Besides, someone with untoward intentions would hire many people to occupy the spots to make a fortune. At this rate, no matter how good the services would be in the store, the reputation would be permanently damaged. Su Ping sighed and sighed and then announced to the customers, the spots in the line cannot be transferred. Everyone must be here to have their own pets trained. Anyone that doesn't want their spots can leave. Anyone that is found out about having sold their spots for profit will be on the store's blacklist forever. The restless crowd quieted down at Su Ping's words. Everyone was dumbstruck. The boy at the front of the line was about to take Yi Hao's mummy. That boy was stunned and he asked, So, my spot is. No transfers allowed. Su Ping had no other choice. That boy was vexed. He would throw a temper if it weren't for Su Ping's strength. He was that close to receiving the money. Frustrated, the boy said, But, this spot is mine. I can give it to whoever I want, right? Su Ping nodded. That's right. So, the store is mine. I can receive whoever I want. The boy was speechless. Yi Hao didn't expect this, either. The spot had been taken away from him. He even wondered if Su Ping was doing this because of him. Who would implement such strange rules? If this was the case, even titled battle pet warriors would have to wait in line at the store. Then, my reservation, Yi Hao was worried. Su Ping found this a problem as well. He asked the system and it replied, one time exception and cannot be repeated. Su Ping was relieved to have this answer. He said to Yi Hao, I think highly of you. That is why I saved the spot for you. It is not a matter of money. The store never had a reservation service available. If you want to come for training, come earlier. Yi Hao didn't know what else to say. He never intended to go there for the training in the first place. But then Su Ping sounded serious and he even suggested coming earlier. Yi Hao might not even come back again. It was just that the business in Su Ping's store was busy. Yi Hao knew that Su Ping probably didn't have time to talk to him because he had only gone there to talk about cultivation. Since Yi Hao had said that he wanted the training service himself, to turn around and leave would seem dishonest. He didn't want to cozy up to Su Ping. That being said, he didn't want to provoke a strange guy with a background he couldn't figure out. Fine. Yi Hao sighed and stood in the line to wait. Su Ping's words explained the situation to the other students. Some felt disappointed that their way of making money was gone. Some students from better off families were relieved. If Su Ping had reservation services, they would have to fight for the spots against some wealthier guys. That wouldn't make any sense. The training service provided in Su Ping's store was outstanding. The price was high but considering the effects, the fee was not expensive at all. But if the spots could be transferred, then the price for the spots would be raised to a whopping high level, and the spots could be even more expensive than the training service itself. When people went there for the training service, they would have to pay more for the spots. That wasn't worth it. Since the noise gradually quieted down, Su Ping went back to business. Since everyone else had accepted this rule, the boy that was going to sell his spot to Yi Hao couldn't complain about it. He just sighed to himself. Outside the store, Zhu Yingshu and Zhu Quang had witnessed everything. She found this interesting. This store owner was young but he was seasoned. Besides, she had heard people in the lines whispering. They were praying that they could still get a spot that day. Hum. Hunger marketing. Zhu Yingshu smeared. She stepped forward. Make way. Yi Hao turned around. Who are you? Zhu Yingshu glared at him but didn't answer. She said directly to Su Ping who was taking notes, are you the owner or the servant here? Su Ping looked up. She was a slim and beautiful lady with a well-developed body. Soon, he noticed the familiar person standing next to her. Was that Zhu Quang? 
Zhu Kuang didn't know that his sister would be this blunt. He was scared. He pulled his sister's sleeve and tried to stop her. Sister. Su Ping understood their relationship at once but he wasn't interested. He went back to write down his notes and said, I am the owner. Go back in whether you want the training service or anything else. But we don't have many spaces for training left today. I suggest you come back tomorrow. Zhu Yingshu was furious since Su Ping had paid little attention to her. Her face was clouded as she said, I heard that you're a titled battle pet warrior. I see that some students here refer to you as their teacher. You're quite the con artist. Astral Pet Store. Chapter 157 Denied. Zhu Yingshu's offensive words stunned all the visiting students nearby. They wondered if this woman was there to cause trouble. Yi Hao raised an eyebrow and gave Zhu Kuang a mocking smile. Con artist, you say. Su Ping glanced at Zhu Kuang. I don't remember you spending a cent in my shop. Did you bring her here to shame me? Zhu Kuang almost jumped. No. No. Sir. My sister must have misjudged something. I'll explain to her right away. Please. Zhu Yingshu was displeased to see her younger brother so brainwashed by this shop owner to a point that he openly disobeyed her. Meanwhile, several more customers were also trying to smooth things out. Hey, miss, Professor Su is no liar. Maybe you heard something wrong. Yeah, we all know he's a titled battle pet warrior. He may look young, but you shouldn't judge him so easily, lady. Look at me. I'm a gentleman who cares about my family despite my, um, average looks. Zhu Yingshu's expression turned colder as more people denied her words. You all know, know what? Just as I thought, he's smart enough to get this many people under his scheme. Without minding the others, she stared at Su Ping in the eye. Do you know what kind of social impact you'll cause if you scam money by falsely parading as a titled warrior? Let's see, if you're truly such a warrior as everybody believes, do you dare challenge me to a fight? Oh don't worry, I'm only a 7th rank battle pet warrior. You can handle that much, right? 7th rank? A customer yelled in surprise, but she looks so young. Yi Hao was ready to enjoy the fun when his rival got beaten, but he no longer felt good when he heard Zhu Yingshu's words. As someone always proud of himself, he had enough problems dealing with Luo Fengtian and Su Ping. A woman had just sprung out of nowhere and was even better than Luo Fengtian, she looked just a few years older than him. Yi Hao clenched his fists as he thought how unfair this world could get. Su Ping gave the woman an impatient glance as he didn't intend to accept the challenge at all. It would waste his time while getting him nothing in return. Don't have time. Get out. Zhu Yingshu scowled as she thought this guy would at least say no politely. Doesn't he want to do something when he's questioned in front of all these customers? Ha, huh, you see that? Zhu Yingshu spoke to everyone, he can't even deal with a 7th rank warrior. Titled, Don't Make Me Laugh. However, those present weren't reacting in the way she had expected. Boy, babe, you got something wrong in your head. Which class are you from? I don't think any student from our academy has reached the 7th rank yet. You may be a big shot to us, miss, but I suggest you be nice to Professor Su. Or his inferno dragon will swipe your ass to the next street over. Yeah, you're only at the 7th rank. That's not even worth the professor's time. Su Yingshu widened her eyes in disbelief. Are you all blind? This man is clearly a fraud, and you're still helping him. An inferno dragon. Even real titled warriors don't tell bullshit like that. Zhu Yingshu had spent many years dealing with all sorts of people in the settler base. She thought she had seen enough odd things. But what just happened in front of her still managed to infuriate her. She couldn't remember when she had felt this angered before. You. Fools. In her view, mentioning the existence of an inferno dragon had stripped the last bit of credit Su Ping could have. How could anyone be stupid enough to tell such a blatant lie? She took several careful breaths and looked at Su Ping again. I don't care what kind of tricks you used to swindle them. But there will be no more of your filthy farce on my watch. We'll settle this with a fight. I'm not going to waste any more breath talking to you, sis. 
Zhu Kuang tugged her clothes, anxious. Silence. Step aside and watch. Zhu Kuang had always respected his sister since childhood. He could no longer find the courage to oppose her when seeing her acting so seriously. Su Ping sighed. I said I don't have time for this shit. Will you scram or not? Scared of me? Are you? Huh? Yeah yeah. I'm scared. I'm so oh 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 scared. Can you leave now? You. Zhu Yingshu thought that was the worst she could expect from Su Ping. She was wrong. He was downright shameless. To make it worse, no one was thanking her for confronting a liar for justice. Instead, people were giving her odd looks, as if she were the nuisance. You won't escape this, no matter what you say. Zhu Yingshu had decided to resort to violence, since she didn't see anyone around the shop who could stop her. I'll just reveal your forgery once I get you onto my feet. Without summoning her pet, Zhu Yingshu simply enchanted a hand with powerful astral power and slapped Su Ping. Su Ping glanced at the incoming attack and looked at his account book again as if it was nothing to worry about. Seeing this, Zhu Yingshu tried to soften the attack slightly so Su Ping didn't later blame her for ambushing someone while defenseless. It would be better if she could force Su Ping to fight back. Clang. Her hand hit something invisible before it reached Su Ping and was bounced back, along with all the strength she put into the attack. The recoil knocked her several meters back and caused her entire arm to go numb. What was that? Su Ping put down his book and addressed the closest customer. Wait here, I'll get your pet. He left for the pet room at the back of the shop without sparing a glance at her. Zhu Yingshu looked between Su Ping and her hand with broadened eyes. She didn't see Su Ping move or use any astral power to counter her attack. Ah. Are you alright, sister? Zhu Kuang feared that his sister was wounded. Zhu Yingshu tried moving her affected arm with a frustrated look, while the waiting customers stared in awe. None of them saw how Su Ping pulled that off, though they were somewhat glad to see the tough visitor getting baffled into the bargain. A piece of advice, lady. Apologize to Professor Su when you still have the chance. Do you think all of us were joking when we said he's a titled warrior? You should feel lucky that he's a good guy, since that was enough reason for him to kill Ya. I second that. You're at the seventh rank, huh? Hey, even advanced battle pet warriors better than you must would have to behave in this shop. Who do you think you are? Zhu Yingshu's cheeks blushed in both embarrassment and rage. She still didn't know if Su Ping was a titled warrior, but that move or whatever he used just then meant he was a lot stronger than her. Trust me, sister, you're making a mistake. Zhu Quang tried. Zhu Yingshu was never someone who would easily make mistakes. But this time, she knew she probably had to admit it. More customers snickered when seeing how the woman's ego was bruised. Soon, Su Ping returned to the counter and handed a pet to the waiting customer. Are you truly? Zhu Yingshu asked him with a strange look. Su Ping ignored her and proceeded to the next customer in line. Again, he didn't have time for this. Zhu Yingshu gave Su Ping another careful glance and decided not to offend such a potential genius who probably came from a very rich family or an influential teacher. Sorry, I was being reckless. Get out the way if you don't have proper things to say. I have a business to run. Zhu Yingshu felt both annoyed and glad that Su Ping never gave her a direct look. This had told her that he wasn't someone who would hold grudges over time. She bowed to Su Ping politely and took Zhu Quang away, whereas Zhu Quang didn't feel like leaving so soon yet. He went there that day to leave a good impression, but instead he caused the opposite result thanks to his sister. Pro Professor Su, may I visit you again? He asked while being dragged by Zhu Yingshu. Su Ping glanced his way. No one's stopping you. Note that I won't tolerate such nonsense again. Of of course. Thank you. Everyone watched as those two headed to their vehicle and saw the car's plate was from the uptown area, where the rich and the authorities were gathered. Weird. I think I've seen that guy somewhere before. Is he perhaps a student from the Ares Academy? The Ares Academy. That name aroused another round of chatter among the students. The Ares Academy was commonly believed to be the best school in Longjiang City for a long time and the notion had remained for over a century. Most, 
Top scorers, who attended the Phoenix Peak Academy tried to go there but had to pick the second option because the admission score of the Aries Academy was higher. The customers had just realized that Su Ping had even been recognized by someone from the Aries Academy. With that, they had more reason to treat him respectfully. Although, their passionate looks were not going to affect how Su Ping dealt with his work. Like usual, he addressed each customer who was there for a pickup, while explaining what kind of new properties the pet had attained. By this point, no one found it necessary to test the result at the shop. At least they would not show any mistrust in front of Su Ping anymore. There were still new customers who went to this shop just the day before, who didn't quite believe that the training had been done overnight just by looking at their pets. As planned, Su Ping needed only to tell those pets to show what they had learned to convince their owners. Astral Pet Store. Chapter 158 Mysterious Realm Coming Up. Seeing their pets wielding new skills they never imagined before, the new customers didn't know how to properly react. If not for their pet contract still in effect, they'd even question whether their pets had been replaced. Or, anyone would think that way if they had been told that a pet had learned a new skill within 24 hours. Then they finally understood why all regular customers didn't need to confirm the result of the training at all. They weren't paid actors, but people who already tasted the sweet result of such an extraordinary service. Similarly, Yi Hao found it difficult to believe how pets could be schooled this fast. But as soon as he remembered the rumors about the particular lightning rat, he no longer doubted Su Ping. A moment later, Su Ping sent all fulfilled customers away and began accepting new orders. Yi Hao didn't need to wait much longer for his turn. I want to buy the best training you can offer. Yi Hao didn't care about the price of the service. To him, he could buy anything that could be bought. Su Ping remembered the system's alert and sighed. Sorry, only normal training is available right now. Then I'll buy the best normal training. Well shucks. There's no best normal training. Everyone gets the same. Yi Hao frowned. Fine. I need to train my sixth rank typhoon. This was his secondary pet which had the potential to reach the seventh rank in the future. As for his main pet, the Thunder Basilisk, it was still under treatment after having been fatally wounded the day before. Su Ping nodded and noted down Yi Hao's name, while Yi Hao calmed his pet down and handed it over. As Su Ping received more fun transfers, all the nursing pens and the nursing space were soon filled up again. He had no choice but to end things there and ask the remaining customers to leave, all of whom protested in annoyance, especially the regulars. As for new customers, they went there mainly to get familiarized with the shop. Training their pets wasn't their main goal. Su Ping waited for all the crowd to leave and closed the door. In the afternoon, when he finished another exploration round in the Dragon King's Heritage Ground and returned, he sensed a powerful presence waiting outside the shop. He went to the door to check, only to see that it wasn't a customer. Though he still recognized this man. Oh, Mr. Su. Yi Chenshin was a bit startled since the door opened when he wasn't paying attention. He had gone there looking for Su Ping earlier, but no one had answered the door in a while. Dialing Su Ping's number yielded no results either, so he had to wait at the door and hope that Su Ping would return soon. He wasn't expecting to see Su Ping come out of the shop instead. Su Ping quickly remembered what Yi Chenshin might have brought him. Is the mysterious realm open? Oh. Um, how are you, Mr. Su? All is well. Su Ping walked back inside while asking, Did you finish exploring that space fracture yet? That can't be. You don't map out a whole space fracture that fast. Not to mention that the one we're talking about is a pretty big one. From what info we gathered, we have decided to define it as a high-level space fracture, which means it's as dangerous as class of barren areas. If we want to map the whole thing, two or three years, I'd say. And that is on the condition that everything goes smoothly. Su Ping casually nodded as he didn't know much about barren areas. Do you know many friends who work in other barren areas? Of course I do. Yi Chenchen smiled. We team Polaris on a decent social network. Do you plan to join another expedition soon, Mr. Su? No. It's just that. I might need your help to look after someone. 
Really, Yi Chenshin was glad to find a chance to repay Su Ping's favor. I hope this, someone, plans to enter a Class B area or below. I'm afraid we can't ensure people's safety if we're talking about a Class or area. Su Ping nodded in acknowledgement. A settler team should need extra protection when traveling inside a Class or Baron area, even if it only consisted of professionals. Of course they couldn't protect a burden. He decided to leave this matter for later since he still had no idea which barren area Su Lingyu was heading to. Tell me about the mysterious realm. Yi Chenchen wasn't expecting the change of subject but decided not to ask. Ahum, the realm will be opened at 9am, the day after tomorrow. I'll come and pick you up at 6. We need to leave the base city and follow Baron Pathway number 6 to reach our destination. Nice. I have time to settle a few personal matters then. It's called the Longtai Mountain Realm, right? Do you know what it's like? Yi Chenchen smiled as he was well prepared for such a question. I see you don't check the settler's website often. I've already sent you everything I know about it via email. Log into your account and take a look. Su Ping turned his computer on and did as told. Although, the mail contained too much for him to finish in a short time. You mentioned that your team got their hands on a treasure map. Did you include that in the mail too? Oh, ahum, sorry, Mr. Su, it's our top secret and is held by the team leader at the moment. We plan to disclose the information to the team once we enter the realm. This is for safety, please understand. Sure. So, what do I get in return if I join you? Yi Chenshin was taken aback by such a question. Usually, an available mysterious realm alone was enough reason for countless settlers to scramble there without a second thought, due to the great many treasures they could find. Their team did prepare some reward for Su Ping, because they were asking him to assist them after all. Otherwise, Su Ping would be free to go there alone. Rest assured, sir, while we can't give you the most important loot we can discover in the core area, you have the privilege to freely pick one of the remaining items we find while exploring. Our leader said so. Besides this, we'll pay you a million merit points. Is this good enough? Su Ping considered. A million points sounded nice, but it was actually not the case because he could earn the same amount by killing an 8th rank monster. Killing a magical corpse beast got him 1.6 million last time. Though he had already spent most of it. Let me see. I'll get 1 million regardless of the result of the mission. If we succeed, I shall get 2 million. Su Ping decided to increase the price. Exploring the mysterious realm was riskier compared to common barren area expeditions, because they wouldn't quit until they achieved their goal. It was just right to be compensated for the extra trouble. Yi Chenchen frowned. One million is pretty good already, and you know it, Mr. Su. Plus, don't forget about the free treasure. You said that I get to choose something while exploring, right? This means I might make a choice only to find a better item later. How about this? I'll wait until we get out of the mysterious realm before I check among all the treasures we take with us. Yi Chenchen sat back and remained silent. This meant Su Ping would take away the best treasure from the stash apart from the core piece. Yi Chenchen could no longer agree to this without talking to his teammates first. Besides, he highly doubted that the other members would be willing to give the best item to an outsider. Astral Pet Store. Chapter 159 Teams Assembled. A moment of thinking later, Yi Chenchen replied, Let me check in with my captain about your merit points. To give Su Ping selection priority among all the treasures they were going to collect was already the best they could do. After all, they were going there for those treasures themselves. If Su Ping had bad eyes, it was likely that he would pick up some garbage even if he could pick first. There was something else Yu Chenchen kept secret from Su Ping. They had the general information about the amount of the treasures and other details, and they intended to hide that information from Su Ping. Naturally, they were trying to make sure that the best of the treasures would be enjoyed by their team alone. Sure. Su Ping didn't mind that Yi Chenchen wasn't making any compromises about those treasures. The interests of both parties had to be kept at a balance. Yi Chenchen wouldn't agree to anything disadvantageous to them. 
This was the same rule that Su Ping applied in doing business. Yi Chenshen went to contact his captain. Soon, his captain answered the call. On the other side was a male with a low voice. He sounded like he was around 40 years old. Yi Chenshen didn't step away from Su Ping. The conversation happened right under Su Ping's nose. Yi Chenshen knew that even if he had stepped aside, eavesdropping his phone call was as easy as pie for Su Ping given his abilities, unless Yi Chenshen used his astral powers to isolate his voice, which would seem strange. Besides, talking about this in front of Su Ping was a way to show his sincerity. As for the result, Yi Chenshen already had an idea. He was simply going through the motions, contacting the captain and posing the question. The terms Su Ping required weren't easy to accept. Two million. That's a bit much. Captain, you know I owe my life to Mr. Su here. You know what happened. I understand. But the other team members may complain. We have to work as a team. I know, Captain. But this exploration is going to be dangerous. I've told you about Mr. Su's abilities. If this is too much for you, I will pay the extra myself. Don't be like that. We are all from the same team. Never mind. Two million it is. The call ended. An agreement had been reached. Yi Chenshin breathed in relief and smiled at Su Ping. Done, Mr. Su. Two million. Okay. Su Ping nodded. This wasn't a surprise for him. Yi Chenshin seemed to have had a difficult conversation. That being said, since Su Ping had been on the streets for a long time, he didn't mind those appearances. When he put forward the terms, Su Ping had done the math himself. What he was asking was not out of line. They were bound to meet 8th rank beasts during this exploration and there might be more than one of them. After all, for an exploration less dangerous, their team wouldn't invite anyone else. They could have handled it by themselves. Who would want to risk leaking confidential information, not to mention sharing benefits with outsiders? Su Ping also thought encountering 9th rank beasts during this exploration was highly possible. Considering this level of danger, what Su Ping was asking for was a friend's price. I heard something a couple of days ago. The mysterious realm is opening up because some big potatoes in the Longjian base city want to prepare some young people for the elite league. That is the only thing being revealed to the public. In fact, something is happening in the mysterious realm. Preparing youngsters for the elite league is a disguise for their true intention. Yi Chenshin felt well disposed towards Su Ping, so he began to share some rumors he had heard after the business side of their deal was settled. Yi Chenshin continued, but those are just stories and speculations. I don't know if they're real or not. Su Ping didn't mind. Even if the stories were true, they have nothing to do with us. You're right. After all, those big potatoes control more information than we do and they are more powerful. We will be considered lucky if we can find the treasures there, Yi Chenshin agreed. Su Ping nodded. Mr. Su, you must be ready. The mysterious realm opening up is going to attract many people. Some students still in school with powerful connections will have the opportunity to go. Yi Chenshin added, apart from those elite students who are taking the chance to get ready for the elite league, some senior explorers are going as well and the second group poses the greatest threat. There's no surveillance inside the mysterious realm. Killing for money is a common occurrence. The danger doesn't only come from the beasts but from our own kind as well. Noted. Su Ping didn't reveal any emotions. Yi Chenshin smiled after a moment of surprise. Of course, Mr. Su, you will be with us, Team Polaris. People won't challenge us, generally speaking. That being said, we cannot be too careful. Su Ping nodded. I will head back if you have no further questions. I will come and pick you up the day after tomorrow, Yi Chenshin said. Su Ping didn't ask Yi Chenshin to stay. He had to make the best of time to prepare as well. Having sent away Yi Chenshin, Su Ping logged onto the explorer's website to check the email Yi Chenshin had sent him. Su Ping took a careful look and he then had a better understanding of Long Tai Mountain. He didn't try to find more information online. Yi Chenshin's research had to be more thorough than his. In the 109 parcels of this mysterious realm hides danger as well as treasure.
Those 109 parcels are the main exploration and training sites. The other important site is the Dragon Stand and the Dragon Bones. The Dragon Bones are used for testing. Whenever the mysterious realm is available, some young elites would go to the Dragon Bones for testing. The top ones are most likely to be taken as students of titled Battle Pet Warriors. Su Ping found this information interesting but it wasn't relevant to him. He didn't want to take a titled Battle Pet Warrior as his teacher. He began to browse the details of the 109 land parcels. Of the 109, 57 had been explored and the information of the 57 parcels was quite specific. The treasures in the 57 parcels had been taken away already. Some of those treasures were delivered to the explorer's shop. Explorers could save up some merit points to purchase those treasures. The water barrier Su Ping had bought was such a piece of treasure. The rarer and more precious treasures had been collected by people with strong connections or powers. Su Ping had to admit that the information Yu Chenshin had provided him was comprehensive. It mentioned that once, in Parcel 28, a piece of treasure had been recovered and people said that piece of treasure could inflict harm on legendary battle pet warriors. Someone leaked the information when that piece of F treasure had been uncovered. Many parties began to fight for that and a bloody war was waged. That event happened more than a decade before. It was a story of another time. Yi Chenshin was surely trying to appeal to Su Ping by including this story in the file. He intended to show Su Ping how alluring those treasures could be. Each parcel has a number. Apart from those that have been explored, the other parcels remain unknown. Almost all the treasures in the explored parcels have been taken away, but there can be some pieces that might have been missed. Each parcel has a different environment. The information of those explored parcels was specific, but there were very few details about the unknown areas. Su Ping browsed through the file to have an initial understanding of those places. Somehow, he had a feeling that this mysterious realm seemed familiar. Su Ping turned off the computer. There was no time to lose. He took his pets and went to the Dragon King's Heritage Round. He could train his pets while exploring more dragon scale lands. While Su Ping was preparing for his visit to the mysterious realm, other people in Longjiang City were getting ready as well. In the upper town area, Zhu Kuang and Zhu Yingshu were sitting in the living room. Apart from them, their father, Zhu Jiangguo, was also there. He was the president of the Zhu Group. The Zhu Group was an enterprise with assets ranging in the billions. In the Longjiang base city, the Zhu Group was a famous top 10 enterprise. Most families used items produced by the Zhu Group's subsidiaries. Sister, do you mean it? Zhu Kuang was surprised. He had found out about this just then. The Long Tai Mountain was opening up and his sister's team was going. Born in a wealthy family with a sister that was a senior explorer, Zhu Kuang was well aware of those mysterious realms, which were far more dangerous than the barren areas. They would have to fight people in addition to the beasts. Every time a mysterious realm was opened, someone would come out with a smile while another would never come out again. Have you decided which parcel you're going to? Zhu Jiangguo asked. Zhu Yingshu looked at Zhu Kuang, patted his head, and answered the question, I just learned about it. We are going to parcel 83. Zhu Jiangguo's eyebrows were knitted together. Do you need Zhang to protect you secretly? Zhu Yingshu shook her head. We are working with two other teams and we have everything ready. We can make it even if other teams try to challenge us. Zhu Jiangguo was still frowning. He loved and cared for his daughter dearly. If you sense any danger, you must protect yourself first. I asked someone to prepare this armor for you. Take it. Sure. Zhu Yingshu answered happily. Zhu Kuang interrupted. I want to go. The smile on Zhu Yingshu's face disappeared. Don't start acting up. Zhu Kuang went on. I just want to go to the dragon stage and test my abilities. It is a public area where no conflicts can happen. Zhu Yingshu was relieved to hear those words. But she still adopted a grumpy tone. Do you need that test to find out about your abilities? I don't think you can pass the first dragon bone. Don't go there and humiliate yourself. The chances of going there don't come cheap. Zhu Kuang was hopping mad. 
Dad, look at her. She's not wrong. Astral Pet Store. Chapter 160 Done. In a battle stadium in the upper town area. This was a professional battle stadium. Apart from the battle venues, there were some pet-related virtual devices. Those battle pet virtual devices were popular arcade games. In one of the private rooms, XC Yurikshwan sat in front of the battle pet virtual device and stared at the grey screen with a cloudy face. She had lost again. This was the 207th time. Ever since she received the message from her teacher, she had spent much time thinking about the question at home. That yielded no result. So, she went to the battle stadium to practice in a simulation. According to the requirement of the question, she chose the standard configuration of the battle pets. However, whichever way she tried and whichever skills she used, her pet would be killed by the limbo lion. On several occasions, she was very close to making her pet and the limbo lion perish together, but every time, she just lacked that final touch and she lost. This is too hard. Xi Yuexuan was sweating. She pulled the rod to start again. Five minutes later, her screen dimmed down. Again. Again. Lost. Again. Time after time, Xi Yuexuan could not even concentrate. Her teacher had given her three days but she had no clue at the moment. Having lost so many times, her mind had become unclear. All of a sudden, some information that she had almost forgotten popped out. Since she had no other choice, she subconsciously began to implement that method. First, use death him. Then, the soul incursion. However, before she could use the soul incursion, the limbo lion had pounced over. The death him was of no effect, at all. The screen dimmed for yet another time. Xi Yuexuan's mind cleared up. She bit her teeth. She knew that this method would never work. It was ridiculous that she had nursed a slight hope that the liar's method would do wonders. She started over. When she was about to launch the attack again, all of a sudden, she remembered that the liar's method didn't begin with death him. Did he say to use dark mist and deadly roar before the death him? Since the two abilities were of no use to the limbo lion, Xi Yuexuan skipped over them directly. She frowned and clicked on the keyboard. Dark mist was released. Then, the corpse dance unleashed the deadly roar. She quickly followed up with death him. She didn't know why she was trying that liar's method again. Maybe, it was because she had absolutely no way to deal with this limbo lion. On the screen, the corpse dance stood on the spot and used the death him. Xi Yuexuan threw a look at the limbo lion. Previously, every time she used this skill, the limbo lion would pounce at the corpse dance because this was its most vulnerable moment. However, this time, to her surprise, she realized that the limbo lion stood still, shaking its head as if it were stuck in some sort of illusion. Was the limbo lion's mind disturbed? Xi Yuexuan was taken aback. She opened her eyes wide. Almost by instinct, she initiated the soul incursion. The limbo lion trembled for a second and then a mist came over its eyes. The soul incursion worked. Xi Yuexuan was stunned. Then, she remembered the third step that the liar had told her. To make the corpse dance step forward and punch the lion in the face. Even without that liar's explanation, Xi Yuexuan would clearly take this rare chance to land the final blow. Soon, the corpse dance pounced at the limbo lion and tore it apart. Ever since the beginning, the limbo lion had had no chance to fight back. This was such an easy win. Xi Yuexuan looked at the word, victory, on the screen. She still couldn't accept this. Was it that easy? Did she win? A long time later, she came back to her senses. Seized with a mixed feeling, she started the game again. This time, she chose the same skill combo as before, Dark Mist, Deadly Roar, Death Him, Soul Incursion. The Limbo Lion again sunk into the illusion while trembling. The combo worked again. Xi Yuexuan controlled the corpse dance to tear apart the Limbo Lion at once. The word victory emerged on the screen. She had won again. Xi Yuexuan stared at the screen. Winning once might be a coincidence but winning twice would be something else. Previously, she had tried every means she thought were effective but none of them worked. 
However, she won twice in a row by using that liar's method. She remained silent for a moment and then tried once again. She won. And again. She won eight times in a row. The same method and the same victory without any accidents. Winning had become a sure thing. She paused for a moment and then dived back into the game. This time, she used her old method. Soon, the screen turned gray. She had lost. Several times later, she was certain that to win against this limbo lion, she had to go with that liar's way. Wait a minute. If the method worked, then that person wasn't a liar. Xi Yuexuan's face turned pale at this thought. If he weren't a liar, then he must truly be a titled battle pet warrior. And she had filed complaints against a titled battle pet warrior. She was covered in cold sweat and appeared to be ghastly pale. She even called that person and hurled verbal abuse at him profusely. Her heart was pounding. The only thing that made her glad was that she had concealed her real number. That person didn't know who she was. Oh no, I have to withdraw the complaints right away. She wasn't in the mood to continue the experiments. She dashed out of the battle stadium at once. When she went back home, she went online immediately to withdraw the complaint, only to find that it was being processed and could not be withdrawn. Usually, the feedback would be provided after two to three days when the complaint was being processed. Xi Yuexuan clicked on the mouse madly, trying to stop the process. But there was no reaction. Her face was clouded. She wanted to open up the chat window to apologize to that person. However, she had blocked his chat and deleted him from the blacklist. She couldn't even unblock him. Xi Yuexuan was too frustrated to cry. She then remembered her phone. Yet soon, she wailed again. She had blacklisted and deleted that person on her phone as well. To make it worse, she didn't bother to memorize his number. I am doomed. There is no fixing this. Xi Yuexuan was depressed. The only thing that made her feel better was that the guy didn't know her. Otherwise, she wouldn't even be able to sleep. Never mind. I will hand in my answer. This will be a reminder to not be so reckless in the future. Xi Yuexuan sighed. She opened the folder, found the question, and then typed in the answer. Then, she emailed it to her teacher. In case that her teacher would miss this email, she called her teacher right after. Sir. Yuexuan, I've been meaning to call you. Sir. What is it? The long time mountain is opening up. I've just got the news that our academy can select three students to go to Parcel 65. For all I know, Parcel 65 is one of the priority parcels and the teams will be led by the future family head of the Keen family. There must be many treasures there. Those that join the team can get one treasure each. It is free to join the team. Our academy got this chance through our principal's connections. But you must know that many students want to go and are now fighting over the chance. If you can do well this time, I will try and put you in. Xi Yuexuan was stunned by this news. Long Tai Mountain. She had heard about this when she went on exploration in the barren areas before, but she had never gone there. Besides, the Qin family that was just mentioned was a local overlord at the Longjiang base city. The Qin family could do whatever they wanted if not completely controlling the city. Sir, what do you mean? I gave you a question last time. Think about it and solve it. That is an advanced level question. Answering it can get you many points. Xi Yuexuan understood. She felt both glad and troubled. She said, Sir, I finished it. I just emailed it to you. Really? So fast? You have two more days. The Long Tai Mountain is going to open the day after tomorrow. There's no rush. Okay, but the answer I came up with should be the best. Are you sure? Well, end of the chapter. Astral Pet Store will be read in five chapters for every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Please leave this sound novel and press subscribe, follow, and the bell so you don't miss any new clips as well. See you.